Over a decade ago, I began looking into Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Now, having been Orthodox a decade or, or so, I look back on a number of the things that I did in the early stages with a lot of regret. And so I've compiled a list of five things I wish I would have done differently in those early days. The first is that before I was even baptized, I started a blog. It's now taken down, and, and I, I looked at the content of it a few years afterwards. I took it down pretty fast. Um, I don't think it existed longer than a year. And I was aghast at some of the things that I had written. Not only were there blatant uh, theological errors, uh, but I tended to quote mine the church fathers, which is regret number two. You see, I didn't really understand the rule of faith of um, St. Vincent of Lerin. Uh, that I sort of believe that if any church father said it, then it must be somehow um, valid or authoritative. But that's not necessarily true. In fact, saints can get things wrong. We see this in a number of instances throughout church history. But one of the one of the um, one of the statements that really caught my attention early on was Saint Cyprian's statement about the church, essentially saying there's no salvation outside of the Orthodox Church. And I took this pretty seriously. Now, I was a little bit uncomfortable with with that because I had a lot of Protestant friends and families, but I figured, like Saint, you know, uh, like Father Seraphim Rose said, uh, I need to crucify my mind and humbly submit to this doctrine. Now, I didn't know then that <clears throat> that Cyprian's view of the church has since been refuted time and time again by the church proper uh, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But because of uh, believing in this idea uh, that, you know, um, all baptism outside of the Orthodox Church is just a vain washing, and essentially it's precluding salvation from those outside the church and saying it authoritatively, uh, I began to think that it was my prerogative to convert others, and that's regret number three. Now, trying to argue people into the faith doesn't really work. And although I was not really that forceful when it came to arguing, I, I did uh, embody a kind of subtle hubris. Now, I'm not saying, and let's be clear, I'm not saying if you, if you are in a conversation uh, about theology to just hide away your opinion or to, um, to not express it if you disagree with someone. But generally speaking, we need to be careful how we do so because it can come across um, quite arrogant in many cases. Uh, and, and not only that, if you're, if you're young in the faith, you shouldn't even be having these conversations early, early on in Christian history. You, you didn't even get to, to hear the creed, um, or say the Lord's prayer. You were, you were thrust out from the back of the church because what you need to focus on is your spiritual life, which is, which is prayer, which is prayer. And the deep mysteries of the church are not something to, to banter about lightly. In fact, one of my favorite one of my favorite um, things from, from the book, uh, stories from the book, Mary, Worthy of All Praise by Father David Smith, is, is just that. He was, he was trying to engage a monk in, in conversation about why he believes what he does about Mary. And the monk who is sweeping the floor just looks up, smiles at him, and continues to sweep the floor. And that made a big impact on Father David, as he says in the book. I'll link that in the description. Now, there's a kind of naivete that goes along with converting, uh, typically. This is, I think this is frequent. Um, or common among converts, you know, converts will idealize their priest and put them on a pedestal, often consider that anything that they say or do or any of their opinions is author are authoritative and, and infallible. But no, priests are human too. Priests, like saints even, even if the priest is a saint, they can make mistakes. Now, a good priest will admit this. I am human. Do not treat me like a god. Um, need, and also a good priest will, will never infringe upon your, your own freedom. This is a, a, a key thing here. If you have a priest that insists that you obey them and is coerce, coercing you into doing or, or being a certain way, then that's a, that's a red flag you need to run away. To, to claim that anything that a priest says is authoritative is just misses the mark. Um, you know, a, a lot of the early Christian heretics, condemned heretics, were priests and bishops. 
Now, the fifth regret is attend seminary too soon. I don't really know what to say about that. I did write an article about these regrets, which you can find in the description if you want to read uh, more in depth about it. But uh, just it's 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 kind of the best the best place to be. Kind of is is a layman who is unknown and keeping to himself and hiding the faith and all you know treasuring all of these things in his heart. Um, now, some will say like, well, why are you still producing content? Well, on this side of it, you know. Um, I feel a little bit of a responsibility with Theoria and then the other outlets that I have to to say some of these things, um, and I'm trying to do so um, carefully. Um, that's that's I guess that's why I'm sharing here, uh, also, so that um, the the wise one can learn from the mistakes of those that went before them.